so let's start doing this set four friends a b c and d played a game with chips initially the chips with them were in 60s 40s 50s and 70s respectively such that each one of them had a prime number of chips with them first of all what does that mean in 60s means it is 61 62 63 etc but if it's a prime number it can be 61 it can be 67 similar in 40s means 41 42 43 44 etc but if it is prime number it can be 41 43 or 47 only and that was for the other people as well they played six rounds of a game in which the chips were exchanged among themselves at the end of each round this is important that the chips were exchanged among themselves why is this important exchanging the chips Amongst themselves means one guy is giving the chips to some other guy, some other guy is giving to some other guy. Basically, all chips are distributed amongst themselves only. So, the total chips would always remain the same because the chips are not going out of the group. No chips are coming from outside the group. So, everything is within the group. The total should remain the same. And then we have some extra information. So, we have these three points over here. We have these few more points over here. What I have done, I have written all these points on one single page so that we can solve them easily. So, I have written all of them here. I made a table as well that initially Ajit had in 60s and a prime number. So, I am taking 61 or 67. Biswa in 40s but a prime number. So, it is 41, 43 or 47. Similarly, for Cindy and Danny, the numbers are given to us. Accordingly, we have to fill up all these cells now. So let's start filling them up using all of them. Ajit lost 10 chips in each round. So can I say he lost 10 chips here, he lost 10 chips here, minus 10 here, minus 10 here, minus 10 here and minus 10 here. Okay. The number of chips with Biswa from the start to end formed an increasing AP. So for Biswa, it is increasing AP. That means they increased by some number, let's say D here. Then it again increased by the same number here because that's what AP is. Every time you have the same common difference and because it's an AP, so it is increasing by the same common difference. Third, the number of chips with Denny were between 71 and 77, both inclusive, considering even the initial number of chips and across the six rounds, but not necessarily in the same order. That means 79 is not a possibility. So Denny has... 71 to 77. So, these 7 numbers are used in these 7 cells. So, at some place I will have 71, at some place I would have 72, at some place I would have 73, so on and so forth up to 77. Next, Biswa ended his 6th round with the same number of chips that Ajit had at the start of the game. Now, there is an important point. Ajit lost 10 chips here, 10 here, 10 here. So, basically Ajit lost a total of 60 chips. So, can I say finally he would be having either one chip or seven chip because initially 61 or 67 were there, 60 are lost, 61 minus 60 is 1 or 67 minus 60 is 7. Here he says Biswa ended his sixth round with the same number of chips that Ajit had at the start of the game. So, can I say Biswa here had either 61 chips or 67 chips. Biswa here had 61 chips or 67 chips. There is an important point. Can I say the total number of chips with Biswa can be 41 plus 60 at the end or it can be 43 plus 60 or it can be 47 plus 60. I hope you are with me on this because initially it was 41 or 43 or 47. It increased by D in all the coming six rounds. At the end, he has 61 or 67. So, 41 plus 60 should be either 61 or 67. 43 plus 60 should be either 61 or 67. 47 plus 60 should be either 61 or 67. And you will see the first case is actually ruled out here because that's not possible. Just have a look at this. 41 plus 60 cannot make 61. 41 plus 60 cannot make 67. So, I can say the initial number of chips with Biswa cannot be 41, right? See, D has to be a natural number, which is not coming out in the first case. But when I talk about the second case here, 43 plus 60, can it be 61? Yes, if D is 3, 41 plus 6 into 3, 18 can give me 61. Can 43 plus 60 be 67? Yes, 
43 plus 24 can give me 67. So both possibilities are there. What about 47? 47 plus 60, can it give me 61? No. 47 plus 16 is, uh, sorry, 14 is 61, but 14 cannot be 60. Can 47 plus 60 be 67? Again, no. This also is not possible. So, can I say the only possibility here is 43 because 43 plus 60 is the only case that can give me a 67 at the end. I hope all of you are getting my point. 47, 43 plus 60, 60 can be equal to 18. That is one possibility or 43 plus 24. That's also one of the possibilities. But with 47, you can't add 14. You can't add 20. Both of them were not possible. Right? Neither 14 is a multiple of 6 nor uh, 20 is a multiple of 6. So, this also is not a possibility. The only possibility is 43 over here. Though, I don't know. Ajit has 61 or 67. That is yet to be calculated. That we will be checking on. But currently, we can say this is the only possibility according to which we can have it. Let's move on from here. Next one. The number of chips with Danny was even after round 135 while it was odd after round 246. So, with Danny, after round 135 it was even. So, it was even, it was even, it was even. And it was odd after round 246. So, it was odd, odd and odd. Next. Number of chips with Cindy was a perfect square after round 1 and 4. So, this was a perfect square after round 1. This was a perfect square after round 4. Let's have a look further now. Both Cindy and Danny had 74 chips at the end of round 3. So, at the end of round 3, they both have 74 chips. So, this must be 74 chips. And therefore, this number should also be equal to 74. So, I have written 74 over here. So, can I say the other two even numbers? Because all the numbers are between 71 and 77. And we have to use all the numbers. So, these two even numbers here can be 72 or 76. Similarly, this one can be 72 or 76. Next, all friends except Danny ended up with a prime number of chips at the end of round 6. So, therefore, we should be having a prime number over here, a prime number over here, a prime number over here, sorry, here. But it is not necessary a prime number because he says except Danny. All of them are having a prime number at the end. Except Danny, everyone is having a prime number at the end. So, therefore, about all of them, I can say so. So, how can I move ahead from here? So, if you just uh, look at this closely now, uh, basically what all things I have. So, first thing that I see over here, if you can see, if it's a prime number, 1 cannot be here, right? Because 7 is a prime number. So, how can I use 1? So, this must be 7. And if it is 7, then this must be 67. That is fixed. And if this is 67 and this is 43, which tells me that D is equal to 4, right everyone? This means D is equal to 4. So, D is equal to 4 and ultimately this would also be equal to 67. So, I can make some of the figures now over here. Let me just remove all of them and write again. So, I am saying that what are these numbers? 67 minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. 43 plus 4, 47, 51, 55, 59, 63 and 67. What are we left with now? These are the only two rows which are yet to be filled. Let's have a look at them as well. Now, here we should have a perfect square. The other point that I talked about was that some of all the chips must be same always, which I can get from round 3 now. If you add all the figures of round 3, 7 plus 5 plus 4, 16 plus 4, 20 and 15 plus 7, 22, 24, 2. So, this is 240. This should also be 240. This should also be 240, this should also be 240, this is 240 and this should also be 240. Let's start filling it up from round 1. We have 57 and 47. What are 57 and 47? Let's just add them. 57 plus 47 is equal to uh, 104. Now 104 plus 72. 104 plus 72 give me 176. Then this number can be... Uh, how much this number can be? It can be 64. But if I take 76, this number would become 60. I need a perfect square. So, 64 is a perfect square. Therefore, I can say 
this number also is basically 64 over here so i have a 64 here and hence i have a 72 over here similarly here i would have a 76 now because 72 has already been used and once i have a 76 here now 17 plus 63 is equal to 80 plus 76 that is 156 240 minus 156 gives me 84 over here so i get this number as well as 84 I hope you all are getting my point. If I look at these odd numbers now, let's, let's have a look at these odd numbers as well. Here it should be an odd number, here it should be an odd number, here also it should be an odd number. And this odd number is not necessarily a prime number, right? This is what the question has told you. This is not necessarily a prime number, rather it should not be a prime. Because all except Denny are ending up with prime numbers, so this should not be a prime number. But let's have a look at this number first. 27 is here plus 59, 27 plus 59 I have 5 plus 2, 7 plus uh, uh, this is 16, 86. So, sum of these two numbers is 240 minus 86 which is 156. It is 156. So, how can I have a perfect square and an odd number from this range adding up to 156? A little bit of uh, hit and trial, I would say, at this stage can give you the answer easily that these two numbers can be equal to 81 and 75 because 81 and 75 can give you 156. 81 and 75 can give you 156. Now, the only two odd numbers left with us are, uh, I mean, 75 has already been used here. What are the odd numbers that I can use here? I cannot write 71. I cannot write 73. I cannot write 75. I have to write an odd number which is not a prime number. So, therefore, this number has to be 77 and this number has to be 71 or 73. One of them has to be there. This has to be 71 or 73. Here I have a 77. And now I think I can fill up all these values one by one using all of this data which is there with us. And how can I fill up these 71 and 77 as well? How do I figure it out? The point is, this number should also be a prime number. Right, everyone? The question says, right? This number should also be a prime number. So, once I have a 77 over here, I will get up this number as well. That if this is a prime number, how much would it be? So, 7 plus 67 is uh, 74. 74 plus 77, that is equal to 151. 151 subtracted from this gives you 89. So, we get this number as well as 89. Okay. This number is also there with us as 89 now. So, the initial number was 53 or 59 over here. How do I figure it out? This number and this number, these are the only two numbers left with us now, which we have to figure out that which one can be taken. What all informations are there which we have not used yet? The number of chips with Denny was 71 and 77, both inclusive. Considering even the initial number of chips and across the six rounds, Biswa ended his sixth round with the same number of chips. This we have used. The number of chips with Denny was even after one, three, five rounds. So, this also we have used, but the numbers were odd after two, four, six. The number of chips with Cindy was a perfect square after round one and round four. That also we have used. All friends except Denny ended up with a prime number of chips at the end of round six. This also we have used till now. Okay. Okay. So I think I have made a slight mistake over here. This total was 240, not with 75, but with 73. Probably I made a mistake. 3 plus 1, 4 plus 9, 13 plus 7, 20. And 5 plus 2, 7 plus 8, 15 plus 7, 22 plus 20. Yes. I think it was 73. And therefore, uh, I am left with 75 over here because this number has to be a prime number. 73 has already been used. So, if I remove 73 from here, I'll have a 71 over here, right? So, I have a 75 over here currently. So, 75 ke saath, I can get this number as well, 240 minus 47 minus 51 minus 75. If you subtract all of them, you will get this number as well. Let's do it. 7 plus 1, 8 plus 5, 13 and then 9 plus 7, 16, that is 173. And 173 subtracted from 240 will give me 67 over here. Okay, everyone. And similarly, initially now, 
I have 67 plus 43, which is 110 plus 71, it is 181. 181 subtracted from 240 will give me 59 as the initial number of chips with Cindy, and that makes the complete table. So, what I've done, I have written them uh, uh, a bit neatly on the next page as well with the question. So, here all the figures are here. So, I have a 519 over here and I have a 71 over here finally calculated. All other figures we have already calculated. So, which friend did not have the highest number of chips in any round even once? If you just closely look at this, that uh, in round one, Ajit never had highest, right? He never had highest in any of the rounds. Similarly, I see Biswa never had highest in any of the rounds. So, I have at least two people. So, more than one of the above should be the answer. D option that at least two people are there who are never having the highest number of chips in any of the rounds. Second question. At the end of how many rounds were the number of chips with Cindy composite? So, at the end of how many rounds the number of chips with Cindy composite? So, after end of, at the end of round 1 it was composite. Round 3 composite, round 4 composite, round 5 composite. So, there are 4 rounds at the end of which it is composite. So, my answer should be 4. That's correct. Next, we move on to question number 3. At the end of which round did Danny have 75 chips? So, Danny have 75 chips at the end of round 2 here as you all can see. So, therefore, my answer is round 2 that is equal to 75. Let's come to question number 4. At the end of which round was the difference between number of chips with Ajit and Biswa the least? So, Ajit and Biswa is least when it is there. The difference here is 10. The difference here is 4. The difference here is 18. Now, it is increasing always. So, therefore, it is the least here. So, my answer is at the end of round 2. Fifth question. What is the total number of rounds at the end of which Cindy had more chips than anyone else? So, Cindy had more chips than anyone else, not in round 1, not in round 2, not in round 3, but in round 4, it is highest. Round 5, it is highest. Round 6, it is highest. So, there are 3 rounds in which it is more than anyone else. So, therefore, my answer is 3 over here. And this uh, brings the last question of the set. What was the total number of chips used in the game as we have already calculated the total number of chips? is equal to 240 for each of the rounds. So, the answer for the sixth one is 240 and that's how this question is done. Of course, this was a difficult set, but it has six questions on it. So, it depends high risk, high return, low risk, low return, completely depends upon a candidate, how comfortable you are with LRDR.